Today we are creating something incredible, something that I've recently used in the real world and something that I wanted to share with you guys so you can go back and create some incredible curved architecture. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today, if you can't tell, I am super excited about this tutorial. We are creating some elegant, curved, clean lines, finally in ARCHICAD. Now I know I do a lot of basic architecture, but I really wanted to push these videos to the next level as much as possible. So today we're diving into the complex side of ARCHICAD 25. Okay, diving straight into this tutorial. Once you have it open, we're gonna be using the Australian Select template. Again, like always, feel free to use whatever you have available to you. Once we have ARCAD 25 open, we're gonna start the same way we start every other tutorial, Command 7 or Control 7, depending on what system you're on. I'm gonna insert a new story below. I'm gonna call that footings like I always do. So feel free to skip this section if you have seen it a million times before and I appreciate you if you have. 172 mil below in the footings is our slab plus our footing three meters to our ground floor. Then we're gonna create a ground ceiling. In this instance, I'm gonna call it 500 millimeters to the next floor, which is going to be our first floor. Above that, we're gonna have our first ceiling, which is effectively also our roof. And that roof will be another 500 millimeters. For the purposes of this, I'm just gonna leave these on to showcase what they actually do in elevations. We don't talk about them too much, but we'll go into them a little bit today. So let's simply click OK, let's dive down to our footings layer, double clicking on the footings over here, jumping across to our slab tool over in the center of the palette. So click once, expanding all the way across. If you hit the tab button, it will automatically jump to our dimensions and we can start typing, for example, 25,000, so 25 meters, tab once more, let's go 9,000 or nine meters. And there you see, we will have our slab created. I'm just a bit pedantic in my orientation, so I'm gonna click Control D to allow me to move this slab to more the center of these sections and elevation markers. Doesn't really matter, it's just me being pedantic. Now, by pressing Control and the up arrow, we're gonna jump all the way up to our ground floor, right-clicking on footings, show as trace reference. We can see that we've created our ground slab. Next, we're gonna come over to our wall tool, walls, external, outside face, generic. Let's move this down to our 90 mil stud partition, simply drawing a line all the way around. I'm just gonna zoom in to showcase the fact that it's on the opposite side of this slab. So by tapping the P button, it will automatically flip that wall so that we can hold shift, making sure it's perpendicular, finish our walls and have a perfect box ready to go. Going to 3D, you'll see that we've started to create our 3D box. We have our slab that is slightly low. So if we press Command T, we'll open up our settings and we can see we're minus 172 to the project zero. So if we change that to zero, hit OK, out slab will increase in height to sitting in line with our walls. And then pressing control up and right clicking on our ground and going show trace reference. Here is where we're gonna start the fundamental basics of our curved design. Now what I'm envisioning is one side of the curve wrapping down, falling to the ground and connecting back to nature, whilst the other one wraps upwards pointing to the wards of the sky. And in turn, we're creating that connection from the ground all the way to the sky through elevated, elegant curved lines. Now to effectively do this, I'm gonna to go to our slab tool. I'm gonna to use a generic slab, but I'm gonna beef it up quite substantially. So if we go Command T, we'll open up our settings again. We're gonna change the structural composite and we're gonna change that to concrete. So by typing in letters, I can find my concrete hit enter and I'm gonna make that, I wanna say 300 millimeters for the time, but we might revisit this soon. Next, I'm gonna click okay and I'm simply gonna draw a slab around this whole section here. Clicking on it once again, clicking on the outside edge, offsetting all edges and I'm gonna offset. Let's go 1200 to make that an easy concrete cantilever. Next, command down, clicking on the external perimeter of these walls. If they aren't already automatically grouped, Alt-G will automatically group those walls. So you can go Control-C, Control-Up-Up. Up. So you see on this side, we move up and down to our next floor. 
and then control V to paste it in the correct space. So clicking off that to secure and confirm that we are happy to paste that in that position. Coming back to our 3D to see what's happening and what is going on. Now there's a reason these aren't working correctly in this point of time because this slab isn't 500 mil as per our command seven ceiling grid spacing. So what I wanna do is click on that slab, control D, click on one of the external nodes and push it all the way up to that first floor. After that, I wanna select the ground floor walls, clicking on the once command T opens up our wall selection settings. And then I want to increase the top link to the first floor and make sure that is zero. Now I can click okay, those walls will automatically lift up in line with our walls above. Going to our ground floor so we can quickly establish what elevation we have to go to to understand how we're gonna manipulate our curved facade. We can see it's elevation three we need. So if I right click on elevation three, open with current view settings, and then just expand that so they all go in this top tab. We're gonna see these dashed lines for starters, and this is what I'm usually talking about by unticking all of that information on the side. So by pressing control seven or command seven, you'll see that by simply unticking all of these, clicking okay, all of that information is quickly going to disappear. Now, some people like that, some people don't. Personally, I like to change that information, so I untick it, but you will keep it ticked for the purposes of this video. All right, so now we see our elevation, and like I was saying, we're gonna be connecting the right side to the ground and expanding up to the ceiling. So this slab protrusion here might actually be pushed back, or it might fall back to the ground after that to create a walkway underneath. I'm not sure yet. So let's start in the center here so we can actually create something a little bit different. If you've made it this far in the video, firstly, thank you so much for being a part of this community. It is ever growing. Thanks to more and more people seeing the videos, sharing the videos, and most importantly, hitting the like button down below. Believe it or not, that like button and that like button alone helps with the YouTube algorithm and makes more people see this content and more people hopefully get into the architecture profession or if not better themselves in the architecture profession. Whilst you're down there, don't forget about the links in the description. There is one link down there that will take you to my website filled with digital downloads. These are absolutely essential for any architecture student, any architect, or any designer working in the architecture practice. It doesn't matter where you're located from Australia to Europe to America or anywhere potentially in India or Asia, New Zealand, the checklist is universal and will help you get better at what you're trying to achieve. Now I'm gonna start this process with a very simple line tool. I'm just gonna click once, holding the shift button, pressing the D key, and then typing in 2500 gives me the start of my elevated shape that I'm trying to create and curve. Next, I'm gonna activate my spline tool, clicking on the edge once, and simply clicking two more times down to the bottom to create a nice gentle curve falling back to our floating concrete ceiling. Now that we have the fundamental basic shape created, this can work with a million other shapes. If you wanna create something funky, go for your life. You can create almost anything your heart imagines. We're gonna copy these two lines by pressing Control C, and then we're gonna come up to Options, Complex Profiles, Profile Manager, and we're going to create a brand new profile. So I'm gonna call that Curved Up and click OK. I'm gonna move this just to the side and then I'm gonna command or control paste my curved line in the center is perfectly fine. Clicking OK, justifying that it goes there. And then I'm going to move the bottom, the top of this line to this red X. Now it isn't really critical if it's the top or the bottom, we can manipulate that later, but I just wanna have one of those points on that X marker. Now we're gonna select this top linear line, click, click Control D, then press the Control button again to activate the multiplier tool, hold shift. From memory, our concrete slab was 300 millimeters, so I'm gonna move it 300 millimeters across. The spline below, I'm gonna offset, tap control once, 300 millimeters, so that it offsets at a perfect 300 millimeters from that shape there. Finally, I'm gonna hold the Alt button to be able to quickly and easily replicate that line tool join these two ends together, and then scroll down to find my fill tool, holding the space bar, and clicking in the center of that line to automatically fill the space. Now we'll click on that fill again and look up the top here. So it says tile floor. We're not wanting a tile floor, just like our concrete wall, we're gonna change that to concrete structural. And as you'll see, all that fill will change, it'll become 
something very different in the final product. Finally, before we finish up here, we wanna make sure that it's on our wall tool and we click the save button. And all we have to do now is click close. So let's come back into our ground ceiling now to start creating that first shape. The ground ceiling up the top and seeing where our wall is, I'm going to go to the wall tool, making sure it's on external, I'm going to select my curved geometry. And instead of having the basic shapes, I'm gonna change my shapes to complex profiles and select curved up. The rest of this we can manipulate as we go along in 3D. We're not gonna to worry too much about all the nitty gritty details and the finer story settings. We're just simply gonna click on this wall. I'm gonna extend that, let's say 1500 radius, and then I'm going to draw a half moon. Now I know straight away that this is potentially gonna be the wrong way around, but it's a very simple fix. So let's first of all, locate it roughly where we want on this building. Let's say jumping back into 3D, we're gonna see an upside down concave instead of what we actually envisioned. So simply tapping the P button is gonna flip that to the perfect space that we want. With this selected, we're simply gonna click Control D, move it up in line with our concrete slab. And then we're gonna click Control D again. And then we're gonna to go to our ground ceiling, click on the complex profile we've created, Command D, Control D, whatever system you're on, dragging it out to the front of our slab. Now to remove this section, the simplest way is clicking on the slab, coming across to our insert new node and repeating the same step for those two sections there. I believe that this is where our cutoff is and where it falls away, so this is probably the best spot for it. Clicking once more in the center, changing to a curved edge and replicating to the edge. Checking in 3D that we've done the right thing. Yes, that is exactly where slab stops and our wall starts, so that is absolutely perfect. Next, I'm gonna click on this, these four walls pressing Alt G, escape once, clicking on that wall again to make sure it's ungrouped. I'm going to right click it, connect solid element operations, and it'll automatically set it as the target. I'm going to use this as the operator. Then I'm gonna subtract with a downwards extrusion and hit execute. What you'll see is that wall will be perfectly cut in line with that curved concrete blade. So what we've effectively started to do is we've started to create this concave curved structure moving up and I've just noticed that the ceiling below isn't infilled so I'm simply gonna click on the edge of that, click the plus button and just drag that back there. Now that is a beautiful first start to this project. We are touching and reaching for the sky but we aren't connecting back to the ground. So what we're gonna do is we're going to come back into our elevation and we are going to simply replicate that same line that we created somewhere over here. I'm going to press Command E to turn on the rotation tool. Holding the Shift button, I'm gonna rotate it a full 90 degrees, keeping that exact same pattern. Over here might work really, really well. Then I'm gonna return back to my straight geometric shape, clicking on the edge, and coming to 3D to see what we have drawn. We have drawn another curve up, which isn't what we're looking for. So let's go options, complex profiles, profile manager, curved up and duplicate, curved, renaming it to curved down, pressing okay, pressing edit. And then all we're gonna do is simply press command M to mirror this design and command M to mirror it once more starting from that top node here. We don't need that anymore. Let's click save, close, and then finally changing our wall from curve up to curve down. So there you go. Now we can press control or command D, lower that to the edge of our blade wall. And we finally have our wall curving from the ground back up. And now we have our blade starting from the ground, coming all the way up and then swooping all the way to the sky. The fundamental basics of this video have been covered, but now we're gonna turn this ordinary looking box into something architectural and something magnificent. So let's get into that section of this tutorial. Jumping up to the first floor, we are going to right click our ground ceiling, show us trace reference, Selecting our furthest wall, Control D, let's move that back. Oh, I'm gonna guess here, let's go eight meters back, holding the Control button, clicking on the additional walls, getting rid of those walls, 
we're gonna see that box jump right back in. Now I simply wanna create a whole glass box down the bottom and a timber floating blocks box up the top. So Alt G, relink those walls, Command T, let's override the front surface with some vertical walnut, pressing OK. We have some beautiful vertical walnut sitting on top of this concrete floating roof. Coming down to our ground floor, we're going to go to our window tool and we're literally just gonna make this whole wall one large window. So let's start by connecting it, dragging it all the way out, making sure our node extender's there, clicking OK, and coming back to 3D to see what we've drawn. Next, clicking on that window, extending the height both ways up and down, so it is a floor to ceiling glass frame. Command T, Control T. Override object line types, click and change to black. As you know, I hate the orange lines, they drive me crazy. Override pen lines as well. You'll see all the changes happening right before your eyes. Now coming across to our basic window settings, we're just simply gonna click across until we get to our sashes, and we're going to introduce a custom HV grid, clicking on our front view so we see what's going on. So because this is almost 25 meters long, I wanna have 24 horizontal separations, and I wanna have zero vertical separations. So it's just that continuous, nice glass look. I do also wanna click on that again, Control Command T, and change our model attributes. So I don't want aluminum windows. You guys know I like black frame windows, quickly and easily changes all of them, pressing OK. Coming to our ground floor, zooming in, holding Alt, so we can easily replicate that on this side of the wall, and selecting the window, Control Command D, sliding it across, repeating that step on both the side elevations and changing the amount of mullions depending on the length of the wall. Okay, so there we have a full glass bottom box. We have our concrete curved wall, a concrete curved, I'll call it a roof, and our timber box above. I am gonna simply just drop in a concrete roof above. It's not gonna be anything special. We're not gonna work on it too hard. But just so from a practical point of view, you would know there is some sort of actual roof above. So coming back to our first floor, going to our window tool and selecting our window somewhere in here, we have the starting of our window that is obviously way too many mullions for what we need. I am going to extend the window as a simple 500 millimeter highlight and extend it to our curved up wall. Now, I don't want that many transitions and that many mullions in this window, so Control T again. Coming up to our sash options, and let's change that to half of what we usually would have, so five. Gives you a very premium, luxury-looking window. Repeating that on one more side up here on the left, and there we go. Now we have our architectural foundational base that we can take into twin motion, render out, we can create a floor plan interior, we can create an upstairs, living space, bedroom, sleeping quarters, we can do anything with this design. If you do want a copy of this ArchiCAD file, it is available to all Patreon members through the links down below. It'll redirect you to the Discord group chat where you'll have exclusive private use of the all access area and you can download this file whenever you want to keep working on it anyway that's all for me today guys thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it i genuinely do hope you learned something new and are going to take this into your own practice into your own architecture and create something unique and truly special if you did make sure you smash that like button down below like i already said it helps with the algorithm it helps me know that you enjoy this content and want to see me create more if you do want to see more of this content, make sure you also subscribe to the channel because every single Monday I drop a new video, be it an ArchiCAD tutorial or something technology related, usually within the architecture space. But like I said, that is all for me today. So thank you so much for watching and like always, I'll see you next Monday.